Hello friends, my name is Shayla and today I am here to film my mid-month wrap-up for you. This mid-month wrap-up is probably the biggest mid-month wrap-up I've ever done. <laughs> I've been a reading machine, I've been reading lots of manga, I've been reading a lot of novels, I've been doing a lot of audiobooks. So this is going to be lengthy. Grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a snack, because we're going to be here a while. All right, so very quickly, just kind of rough stats. I have already read 20 novels and 28 volumes of manga this month. Again, it's a lot. <laughs> it's excessive. I am trying to work down my physical TBR, but I have also been doing a lot of buying lately, so I'm feeling very much the crunch to get it all taken care of. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I am going to start with the manga, even though there's 28 of those, 18 of them I talk about in other videos. So that's why we're gonna start with that because I can refer you to the other videos and then we'll go from there. So first up, one of my more recent videos was I did kind of a how to, to use NetGalley to review manga. And in that video, I review 10 volumes of manga that are coming out in either September or October, one of them being Not Your Idol Volume 2. And guys, this volume is so good. <laughs> if you want my thoughts on this, as well as other things like the finale of Auhar Ride, Comey Can't Communicate Volume 9, Beastars Volume 8, there's all sorts of goodies in that video. You'll definitely want to check that one out. But guys... I know this series is on hiatus after this volume in Japan, but seriously, like, it's so good. All right, moving on to the other things. So I need to briefly mention that I forgot to mention in July that I did read Komi Can't Communicate Volume 8. It was really cute, really fun, really loved it. So that one's not included in the stats, by the way. So we have Kami Sama Kiss Volume 13. This was a gift for my birthday. Um, I believe this was from Brie. Yeah, this one's from Brie. And I really love Kami Sama Kiss. This particular volume is kind of a turning point in the series because before we've been focusing a lot on Nanami's feelings for Tomoe and some things like that. But now we're getting some perspective on Tomoe and his feelings and why he's always avoided his feelings. Like it was a solid volume, really enjoyed it. Next we have Shortcake Cake Volume 9. The way this series is going, guys, like it just keeps getting better. This is one of the boarding house style shoujos in which we're following a young woman named Ten, and Ten lives two hours away but was going to school in town, and her friend convinces her to move into the boarding house that she lives in, and there was a bit of a love triangle for a minute, but the love triangle settled, and now we are all about trying to help the winner of the love triangle kind of figure out their life, and it's very convoluted and complicated, and has very interesting family dynamics. So I feel like this one continues to stay intriguing. It doesn't settle into that shoujo plane of it's just like jealousy going on. This one takes a, a deeper tone to it, a darker tone almost. So I recommend the series, guys. Next we have A Witch's Printing Office Volume 2. This one was really fun. I didn't enjoy this one quite as much as I enjoyed the first one. The first one you're kind of establishing Magiquette or like a comic-con style thing for witches and in this one we're exploring other things tracking down spells and stuff for the next convention and I missed the convention feel but it was still really cute I still really love our characters and I still plan on continuing so check this one out if you haven't next on the list is BL Metamorphosis volume 2 this was so cute this depiction of women having friendship together is really, really sweet. So you have this older woman, her husband's died, she's pretty lonely, she ends up picking up a BL manga in a bookstore, the girl who checks her out at the counter helps her, and helps her kind of navigate BL from there, and they fangirl over the same series. Like, they even go to a, a con together to, like, talk about it and fangirl about it together, and the way everything's handled is so sweet and so cute. Like, this is just friendship at its purest level, and I love it. Next, I read the entirety of Fruits Basket Another. I did consider doing a dedicated video for this, but I don't think I'm going to. This series sadly doesn't stand on its own for me. It is so fueled by the nostalgic characters of the original Fruits Basket series 
that I don't think the story stands on its own. So obviously we're meeting progeny of the original Soma clan and such, and then another character that's kind of brought in a little bit later. They all attend school together. Like, it, it's fine. <laughs> It is not my favorite. We do take a center on the progeny of Akito. The way that was handled was probably the best part of the series to me. But yeah, I really just appreciate the original Fruits Basket all the more. Um, I like Takuya's art, so I really wanted to love this series, but sadly this one doesn't stand on its own. It, it relies too heavily on what you have to know from the original series for it to really work, so... Um, because it couldn't stand on its own, I gave the whole series three stars, and that's kind of it. I don't really want to talk about it much more. I'm not even 100% sure I'm going to keep these. All right, so I also finished Cheese Sweet Home, the complete Cheese Sweet Home, I should say. I read part three and part four, gave both of them four stars. This series is nothing but adorable cat shenanigans that poke at your heart, that tug at your heartstrings, and make you laugh and smile and cry all at the same time. I love this series. It's really fun. These are really unique because they're in color. Manga's not typically in color. And I believe these are done opposite. So they're done right to left rather than left to right. Yeah. So they're, they're flipped and they're in color which makes them unique, like different for manga. And anyways, the series is cute and fun. If you like cat shenanigans, go ahead and read Cheese Sweet Home. If you just want a little bit of this kind of a feel, Fuku Fuku Kitten Tales is only two volumes. And I think it almost does the exact same thing that this series does, just on a smaller and more simple level, I guess you could say. Next up, we have Chobits. I read Chobits in its entirety this month. I'm holding up the collector's edition um, just to kind of represent that. I had borrowed it from my friend Maeve. I have returned those to her and yes. So Chobits, it was a, it was a ride. I will link the video. Definitely go check it out. And yes, I would recommend checking out Chobits if you haven't, or if you have these, these editions are just so pretty. I mean, come on guys. Like the art is beautiful. It's clamp. So yes, check out Chobits if you haven't. And then last but not least is actually another clamp title. Um, I read Card Captor Sakura, the Collector's Edition, Volume 5. And this was an interesting volume to say the least. So we kind of wrap up the first arc of the story in the Clo Card Collection. And then from there, we start a new arc of the story. And the new arc of the story I find very interesting and intriguing. So I'm... I'm interested to see where it's going to go from here. But yeah, this this was fun. Solid four. Really enjoyed it. Alrighty, that is it that I'm going to talk to for the manga. Again, you have those two videos to check out if you want more details on those things. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in to the novels. So when it comes to novels, I do have a lot of digital because a couple of reasons. One, I've been listening to more audiobooks. I think I've done four in the last two weeks. Yeah, I've done four audiobooks in the last two weeks. So I've been listening a lot more than I have in a long time. And secondly, um, I forgot to mention the arcs I was hoping to get to in my TBR video, and it's Arc August, so I'm really trying to get my arcs under control. <laughs> That's part of why I did that NetGalley video for the manga. Everything's still a little wild, and so I'm still trying to work through a bunch of my digital arcs. Some have been sent to me by authors, others through NetGalley, like, it's been a lot. So we're just playing catch up all around. Kaladin? You're fine. He's downstairs. If you want him, go get him. He's downstairs. Go get him. Go get him. You're okay, Light Song. You stay put. <laughs> Wrangling the cats while I film. It's a, it's a thing. It's a mood. All right, so I'm going to start with all the things that I don't have physical copies of, and then we'll wrap up the physical stuff list as I knock things over. <laughs> All right, so first up on this list, let's talk about The Siren and the Deep Blue Sea by Carolyn Sparks. This is part of the Embraced by Magic series, or the Embraced series, and I really enjoyed this. I This one's the finale, really, of the main series, and it was just really well done, really well handled. These ones are always 
a lot of fun. I typically belly laugh when I'm reading these and it's just such a good time. Like I never get enough of the books in this particular vein and this one is out later this month. Highly recommend you check it out. I should tell you a little more about it. But basically this is like a childhood friends to lovers all centered around different forms of magic. We have shifters. They end up basically going and confronting the big bad in this one. Because it's book five, I feel like I can't talk about a lot of it. So um, definitely check out this series. I've read only books four and five. I need to go back and read the other three because I really enjoy the world, but I know there's pieces I'm missing, so I want to go back and fully understand. Next we have Make Mine a Cowboy. I believe this one's by AJ Pine. Y'all know I love me my cowboy romances. <laughs> and this one was a solid four. I really genuinely enjoyed this one. So this one is a second chance romance and we have Charlotte, who's a big city doctor who ends up coming home to help take care of her grandmother, I believe. Yes, her grandmother who runs an inn and she is, grandma's trying to play matchmaker with Charlotte while she's there. And what she doesn't expect is to run into her old flame, Ben. She used to come home, come there for the summer and they kind of had a thing and she doesn't expect to run into him, but it's the first person she sees when she gets into town. Obviously he's been helping her grandma as well and they start to fake date so that grandma stops trying to match make Charlotte and obviously feelings grow. It's, it's really fun. I really liked the take on this one and I love the series. So check that one out. Next we have Nowhere to Hide by Leslie A. Kelly. And in this one, this is the second book that I've read by this author. The other one was I'll Be Watching You. I read that earlier this year. Rowan, he tries, he's trying to leave his past in the past. And then he sees a woman being attacked on the street. So he goes and he intervenes. Her name's Evie. Evie is kind of a pseudo detective. She's trying to solve murders. Her friend was killed by a serial killer and she's caught that serial killer through all of her investigating and tying all these cases together and she sees a similar pattern happening within the state of California. So that's why she's in California and she meets Rowan. He basically becomes her protective detail pretty quickly because people are after her. They don't want her to solve this particular murder and problem. And it's very high stakes, very intense. And I really enjoyed it actually. Um, if there's enough romance in a suspense, I do okay because <laughs> I get the break from the intensity because the romance is there to kind of break that up. But in just thrillers, I tend to get too anxious because you don't really get as much of that. So I recommend checking out the series. Their chemistry on page is fantastic. So again, I highly recommend it. Next we have Sinfully Scarred by KB Winters. This is book two in a motorcycle club romance. The, it's called the Reckless Bastard series. And I really liked this one. So we're dealing with the brother of the guy of the first novel and the best friend of the girl from the last novel. So they're in close quarters together pretty often because the brother and the best friend like are together and are gonna get married. And so he is fresh out of jail because he was sentenced for a crime he didn't do. He's feeling very bitter about all of that. She's a former supermodel. She had an injury, has a big scar on her leg, so she doesn't model anymore. So he now owns a tattoo shop. She comes into the tattoo shop and says, I want to get a tattoo. And they decide to do like a, um, a feather, a peacock feather or a phoenix feather. I can't remember. I think a peacock feather over her scar on her leg. And so it's about them being in close quarters and she's kind of got someone stalking her and and he's of course there to protect her like it's it's really fun like these are like th between three and four stars all of them like the, these motorcycle club romances the reckless bastards again I've only done two of them I listened to them on audible escape they're a good fun time I recommend checking them out if you haven't and you like motorcycle club romances again you are going to deal with some tropes within motorcycle clubs they tend to be a little more alpha things like that. So if that's not really your jam, probably avoid MCs, but yeah. All right, next we have Can't Help Falling by Cara Bastone. This is book two in the Forever Yours series. So in this one, this is a different take on a single parent romance. So essentially there's 
Tyler, who's like this eternal bachelor. And he is starting to kind of crush on this girl named Seraphine. It's a friend of her buddy's, of his buddy's wife. And she's, I call her kind of hippy dippy trippy. <laughs> Um, she's very into auras and crystals and stuff like that. And that's not something I see a lot in romance novels, but with the way this one was done, I kind of want to explore them a little bit more. So anyways, Tyler asks Seraphine out. She basically dresses him down and strips him bare. And then he finds out that his younger sister, well, half sister technically, has basically been abandoned by her mom. And... So he flies out to this sister and realizes that he needs to care for her. He brings her back to New York where he lives. He tries to settle into dad life. Seraphine has wanted nothing more than to be a foster parent her entire adult life because she was saved by her foster parents because she had a bad mom. And that whole dynamic is really, really interesting. And I really like the way that... Um, this whole thing plays out because she tries to insert herself into the situation and he's like, I don't know. I can barely figure this out. And she's like, I want to help you and starts to bond with the teen and that kind of stuff. So there's, she, he's like early forties, I think if I remember right. So it's nice to have an older male protagonist and an older female protagonist. Cause she's third early, early thirties. And so there's a big gap between him and his half sibling, obviously in age, because she's a teenager and he's in his forties, you know, it could be his daughter kind of situation. So yes, really, really good. Highly recommend. Next we have Scandalous Secrets by Cynthia Williams. And in this one, this is book two in the Jackson Falls series. This one is, a, I feel like this one was a little more intense than the previous one. So in this one, we we're following Byron and Byron is, Basically, I think he's running for the Senate, if my memory serves correctly. The whole previous book was kind of centered on his campaign, and his campaign manager and his sister were together, but it's also his former brother-in-law, because he used to be married to another sister, and yeah, anyways, kind of taboo there. And in this one, Byron has a secret. <laughs> Byron had claimed to be the father of his best friend in college's kid to actually protect her from the biological dad. So this kind of centers around that plot in which um, because of his campaign, all of that stuff might have to come forward. Plus he, the bio dad is supposed to be getting out of jail soon. So it could cause all sorts of problems. There is a child at the center of this. So again, it has that single parent, second chance romance feel to it. That's just a thing that I live for lately. And I gave this one a solid four. It was really, really good. If you have not tried Cynthia Williams at all, I highly recommend checking her out. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this one. Alrighty, the next one on this list is Dark Song by Christine Feehan. This is the next book in the Carpathia novels. Um, this will be the one that releases September 1st. And in this one, we're following, I believe her name is Evangeline. She was a Carpathian woman who was kidnapped very young by one of the brothers turned vampire. When she's in the healing grounds, one of our monk warriors discovers that this is his life mate. And so he does everything in his power to protect her. And this is so sweet. Like this is one of the sweetest Carpathian novels I've ever read. This one was so gentle and the way that the PTSD aspect of this story was handled was amazing. Like I have not seen Feehan come out a story like that ever, I don't think. Usually her men are very alpha, very dominating and all those kinds of things. And the way that their relationship dynamic comes to be is amazing. Like she's very old fashioned. So she likes that he kind of takes charge, but in a way he fights that because he's been around all these very modern women. And so that is constantly challenged where he's like, instinctually, I want to do this for you, but I feel like to fit in this modern world, I can't. And she's like, no, 
we determine how we work, not them. And just the way they work through all of those kinds of things within their relationship is just so good. And he wakes her up every morning by singing to her like, it's just so cute. And, you know, we get lots of vampire battles and whatnot. And it's just really good, really well done. I really liked it. I highly recommend checking out Dark Song when it comes out in September. The Carpathian novels aren't going to be for everybody, but this particular one I think will be fantastic. So I highly recommend checking this one out. All right, then I read the first two books in the Psy Changeling series, thanks to Jen over at the Book Refuge. And so that is Slave to Sensation and Visions of Heat. So in this series, we basically have these people called Psy who are kind of like Vulcans in Star Trek, meaning they suppress all of their feelings and hide them and they're not supposed to experience feelings at all but they're all interconnected in their minds through what they call the cyanet so that's kind of like their life force in a way because they need that feedback to function anyways and they interact with shifters and changelings in the first one our protagonist our female protagonist is sent by her mother to interact on a business level with the changelings and that's kind of how everything starts and then in the second one we have a Psy that is supposed to like predict fortunes and things like that and see things coming. And um, one of the sentinels of a pack lead of the leopard pack of the previous novel. So these are really, really good. <laughs> if you are a physical touch kind of person in your love language, this series will definitely resonate with you. Because the way that the changelings feel pack, as they call it, like feel their connection to family is through touch. So like a little kiss or a hug or a handhold doesn't mean a lot to them typically. That's how they feel pack. It kind of grounds them in situations that are difficult to deal with. And so it's really interesting and it doesn't leave a lot of room for jealousy within the changelings. And so it's really fantastically done. I really like how the series is handled. I really liked both situations because in the second one, she's been secluded her entire life and it, she ends up with kind of the loner of the changeling group. And so like the way things are lining up is just really well done. And these are by Nailini Singh, if I didn't mention, and I'm definitely going to be deep diving this series. So expect to see more Psy Changeling in the future. And then the last one for the digital reads, I know this is a lot, guys, I'm really sorry, um, is Once Upon a Billionaire by, why can't I remember her name? Jessica Lemon. This is from the Blue Collar, I want to say it's Blue Collar Billionaires that this is from. This is, um, I was sent this um, digital read from the author and I really honestly enjoyed this book. Um, I don't read a lot of like billionaire romances, but this one was kind of a take on it that was really interesting. So we have a woman who came from money. Her dad was a total skis bag and was like embezzling everybody's money. And so she's left penniless and trying to figure out life. And she's got a brother who's a druggie. Her mom died and her dad died in jail. So all of that's kind of in the past. And she's working at, at the city bureau for people like a construction thing where they have to come to get their permits. And so she is sent by her boss to take down this billionaire who's always like ahead or on time on his projects because he has to be cheating the system and blah, 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 blah. And they have great chemistry. And he's a guy who has made his fortune. It wasn't given to him. So he wasn't raised in, you know, the aristocratic social circle. So he doesn't quite fit in. But he pegs her for someone who fits in in society. And he kind of tests that. Buys her Louboutins, takes her to dinner. And they engage in a relationship and it starts to directly come in contact with their work because they were kind of working together at the bureau and stuff and so it's really interesting I think it's handled really well I gave it four stars the smut's great I really enjoyed it um this is a good fun time I highly recommend checking out the series I recommend checking out this book go for it <laughs> all right so let's start with The Hunter by Kerrigan Byrne because oh my lordy this was so good 
I I like this even better than the Highwaymen, and I know that's not a popular opinion. <laughs> but anyways, we have this man, Christopher Argent. He, I stand Christopher Argent forever, just so you know. Um, I gave this five stars, if you can't tell, by the grin on my face and the fact that I'm just about to gush about it. So Christopher Argent was raised in jail. His mom um, was a prostitute, and she does everything in her power to keep him safe, and he witnesses her, her brutal murder. And what happens from there is he becomes a hardened criminal. He basically was in Newgate Prison with the characters from the previous novel. And they work together and get out and all those kinds of things. And Christopher Argent is basically an assassin for hire. And he has been hired to kill Millicent LaCour. Sorry, Millicent LaCour. She is an actress on the stage. She's beautiful. She's stunning. But she also has a child. And the child is the key to the whole story. But anyway, Christopher tends to woo her. He needs to kill her. And it gets to a point where he's about to kill her. And she says, if you don't kiss me, I'll die. And he kisses her instead of, instead of killing her. And this happens a couple of times. And then he realizes, I just can't kill her. I like her. I have to protect her. And that's kind of where our story goes. It's so good. It's so angsty. Oh my gosh. I, I live. I thrive. I Yes, more like this, please. On that note, <laughs> I read Betray Me Not by Michelle Hoff. This showed up in my um, mystery historical romance box. I'll leave that linked for you um, that I unboxed. And this was giving me all of the Hunter by Kerrigan Byrne vibes, but it's a little bit different because we have Madeline de Pellison. Her husband dies on their wedding night. She inherits his fortune. The brother wants feels cheated out of the fortune because he felt like it was his because the brother had always been kind of sickly. It ends up going to her instead. And she's hired by this guy at basically the equivalent of like the Senate. He's really high up, talks to the king kind of situation. And she's hired by him to woo the spy who's been sent by someone else within the same court, essentially. And so she basically traps the assassin for hire, the spy guy, into marriage. And so this is like a fake marriage kind of situation. He's immediately attracted to her, so he goes along with everything. He is kind of like bullied into it, but he does go along with it. He tries to make it his own way and stuff. And it's really fun. Like I was surprised this was better than I was expecting. It was written in 2000. There's no dubious consent or anything. Like, it's good. Highly recommend Betray Me Not by Michelle Hoff. Next we have Gentle Warrior by Julie Garwood. I ended up buddy reading this with Petra over on Instagram. I will leave her link to down below. And this was a really fun time. Um, I really like Julie Garwood. And this one, let's see. Yeah, we've got Elizabeth who her whole family except her and her younger brother are basically slaughtered in their keep and so the person in charge of the area comes and shows up to figure out what's going on and he marries her to help keep her safe and they try to figure out who's behind the murders and it's about their relationship together so it's like this almost forced arranged marriage kind of situation, but you see them grow and learn together and appreciate each other. Like, it's really well done. I really liked Julie Garwood. Definitely would recommend. Next we have Leopard's Fury by Christine Feehan. You guys know I love Christine Feehan. This one was uh, da, 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 Evangeline Intriguer. His last name's Trigger. I'm trying to remember his real first name. They call him Al Alonzo um, in this novel. And this is their romance. I've seen them hinted at for a long time. Evangeline owns a bakery. Alonzo walks in. He senses that she's leopard, doesn't push it. He is immediately attracted to her. He feels like they should be together and he doesn't want to force it. So he just kind of comes in and visits her three times a week for a year, <laughs> essentially. And there's minimal talking, but his leopard is calm and he doesn't understand why. And yeah, it's really good, really well done. I've been looking forward to their romance for a while because I've kind of been reading them backwards. I don't know why, but I'm enjoying it that way. And it's been a really 
interesting experience. But anyway, I really like how everything was handled because they didn't even get to the sexual parts till almost halfway through because they took a slow burn, slow build on things. And it was just really well handled. One of my favorite leopard novels so far, I think they she calls them the leopard people or it says a leopard novel on here. But I think on her website, it's called the leopard people. I don't remember. But anyways, it's really good. Highly recommend if you like Christine Feehan and Alpha Males. All right, and then I read Petal Plucker by Iris Moreland. This is from the um, Flower Shop Sisters series. So I got this in my reveal book box and the cover is cute, but I read the back and all of the flower puns had me in stitches. So essentially this is a second chance romance in which the guy who stood her up for prom comes back to town to run the competing flower shop. So it's an enemies to lovers, second chance childhood romance kind of thing. It's really fun, really cute. It's not very long, so I don't want to say too much, but I really enjoyed the writing. So I plan on exploring more, exploring more of the Flower Sisters novels. And I'm just really excited. I, I don't remember what but yeah, this one was signed as well because it came in the reveal book box. But I recommend checking out Iris Moreland. I really enjoyed their writing and I'm looking forward to diving more. Next we have one of the buddy reads that I did with Lindsay already this month and that is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Um, I ended up giving this one four stars. I felt like it took me a long time to like Jonah and then Kala, I, I never really loved Kala. She's not my favorite protagonist. <laughs> So I can't give it a five. I enjoyed the journey that they went on and the whole aspect with her getting to know her dad was a really interesting plot point. But for this one, I, I'm i not gonna read the sequel. Everything I've heard about the sequel is not something I would ever enjoy. So I, I don't plan on reading the sequel on this one. But I did enjoy Jonah and the freedom that he gave Kala by the end. Jonah's a good dude. Like, I really, this is worth reading just to get to know Jonah and to know that not all guys are the same. So yes, I recommend trying out this first book. If you like Kala, then read book two. But yeah, anyways, those are my thoughts. I'm gonna get like mean and snarky sounding if I keep going, but I did enjoy it and I would revisit this book. Not for Kala, but for everything else. Next up we have Legacy by Helen Hart. This is book 14 in the Still Brothers legacy saga whatever you want to call it and in this one this is the second book in which we're following Brad and Daphne which are the parents so we're getting kind of a flashback to their romance and the dynamics within this one are always really interesting and this is like pretty much every trigger warning you can think of this series is full of triggers so if you're sensitive you probably shouldn't be reading this series because I mean, we have like rape, sexual assault, suicide, like there's a ton in these. Um, try to find a review with a full list of triggers. Um, I haven't seen um, a list of triggers from the author, but there's a lot. So if you're sensitive, probably steer clear. But the sex scenes tend to be very intense. This one wasn't as sexy as most of the Steel Brothers novels have been because this one was very plot heavy. I feel like with the parents, we haven't been as sexual as we have been plot driven. And this one in particular, because of what's going on, um, was very much that way. So um, I still enjoyed it. Um, three and a half stars. And next is the other buddy read that I've done with Lindsay so far this month. And that is Adelon by Grace Draven. This is book two in the... Um, the sequel to Radiance, it's book two in the Wraith Kings series. Book three comes out later this year. In this one, I feel like the last one was very romance centered and then this one was very fantasy world plot centered. So they didn't do a good balance of having the two in one novel. But in this one, we're dealing with political things now that Ildiko and Brishin are married and the kingdom is basically falling apart and they're trying to hold it together. And then there's a subplot in which someone is being brought to Brishan and Ildiko and it's really interesting. I really enjoyed it. 
Um, four stars. Didn't enjoy it quite as much as the first one, but again, um, I'm looking forward to book three. And then last but not least is one that I have a reaction vlog that I just need to edit together to get to you guys. And that is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. I ended up giving this one three and a half. Well, I'm really giving it four stars. My enjoyment level was really high on this one. I really had a good time reading it. Um, there are some problems. I mean, Edward's still a stalker vampire and no one's gonna deny that he's a stalker vampire. And I talk about a lot of it more in the reaction vlog, so I'm not gonna talk about it a lot here, but I did enjoy my experience. It is fueled by nostalgia. If you want a lot of color and content, it's worth reading. And I think that's all I'm gonna say about it here. I'm gonna leave the rest for the reaction vlog. Wow, now that we're here, that was everything. And I've been recording for so long. So this video is long. I'm very sorry, guys. Um, but I'm gonna stop apologizing because I've been told you guys love these videos from me. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, like tell me down below and I will send you gold stars because you deserve it. Um, thank you guys again for watching and I will see you in the next one.